be very, very quiet. We're hunting bison. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Down the Road Travel Channel. My name is Will Van Winkle. Today we decided to take an impromptu trip to Land Between the Lakes. It's just a couple hours outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And there is an elk and bison preserve out here. The ranger stations, Golden Pond, um, Patty's 1880 settlements nearby. But we prefer the elk and bison preserve. Because every time you drive through, you're not really sure what you're going to see, what to expect. It's $5 to get in. I believe it is a five-mile loop, maybe a little bit less. Uh, we find if you go earlier in the morning, you'll find the elk more commonly. Later in the evening, you'll find the bison. We're kind of at a weird time because the bison are just laying around under trees. And the elk were heading back into the tree line. So it's kind of shift change if you will let's go check it out located between the man-made lakes lake barkley and kentucky lake the peninsula that was formed became the largest inland peninsula in the united states it consists of over 170,000 acres of forest wetlands and open land forming the land between the lakes it was designated as a national recreation area in 1963 by President John F. Kennedy and developed using funds during the Johnson administration. Unlike a national park, a national recreation area does allow hunting. So there are some areas where hunting is allowed. Of course, you'll need a license for this, but it is allowed there if you're into that kind of thing. The Elk and Bison Reserve was developed in the 70s, but it wasn't inaugurated until 1996. It is open sun up to sundown all year round. And it is located at Elk and Bison Prairie Road in Golden Pond, Kentucky. It's just a couple of minutes north of the Golden Pond Visitor Center. In the fall, bison calves can often be seen. And in the summer, males become a little more aggressive as mating season begins. Elk mating calls start in the fall, and they do sound a little bit like a bugle. To visit the Elk and Bison Reserve, you must be in an enclosed vehicle. No bikes, motorcycles, or pedestrians are allowed. This is for safety concerns. Um, they may look docile, but they are wild animals, and you never know what they're going to do, and they will defend their territory. The bison are often in the road, especially the bison. Elk can be in the road from time to time, but the bison more likely, and they're less likely to move. So speed limits are strictly enforced within the reserve. 15 miles an hour, make sure you're not speeding. Don't get out of your car if you see a bison uh, within, I think it's 200 feet. Because they are wild animals, you don't know what they're going to do. Do not try to pet the fluffy cows. You can purchase a one-time entry card at the machine at the gate, $5, or at the visitor center. Or you can purchase discounted bulk entry cards at Golden Pond Visitor Center, welcome stations, or any day-use facility. Three, ent three entry cards are $10.00. Five for 15, and buses and commercial vans are 50 cents per passenger. A small museum is housed in the visitor center. I can't sleep, but it ain't for lack of trying. Uh, there's a planetarium, a gift shop. All of this is in addition to the information center. There is a playground out back, and there are picnic tables throughout the uh, visitor center grounds as well. Multiple programs and special events occur throughout the year. That information can be found at the webpage on your screen below. In Land Between the Lakes, there are more than 270 known cemeteries. These were, cre were created before Land Between the Lakes became a national recreation area. Most are small family plots that were created before the network of roads that exist in the area now. Uh, they did this because it was hard to get to cemeteries when a family member died. So they would just kind of create a little plot of land to where they could bury their dead. And out of respect, this was all left there. It is requested that you respect these as well. Uh, they try to keep vandalism down. Most of the time the families are still in charge of these plots, but you can see weathering. Some of these have been there forever, so can be quite fragile. So just be careful when you're in that area and be respectful to the grave sites. In the area, lodging would consist of four developed campgrounds, 
That's Land Between the Lakes campgrounds. These are for tents, RVs, a couple have primitive ca cabins. Close by, you find four state parks, private resorts, hotels, and primitive camping with a permit. Uh, with so much wildlife in the area, occasionally you may happen upon an injured animal. If you do, keep your distance. Injured animals tend to become aggressive, um, especially if they are trying to get away and they can't get away, so they're going to fight to fight for their survival, basically. If you do encounter an injured animal, call the Woodlands Nature Station at the number below or call on law, local law enforcement non-emergency, also at the number below. It is good to note e-bikes are considered motorized equipment that means they can only be operated on designated paths not where regular bikes and hikers or are, are hiking trails are in existence this is because e-bikes are faster creating safety hazard and they do tend to cause rutting in those paths so it's becoming a norm for most national parks recreation areas and even state parks to make it so that e-bikes can only be used on paved surfaces in an effort to conserve nature. Um, I know a lot of people are upset about that. We almost got e-bikes. I did a lot of studying on it and I noticed that it is quickly becoming not so much outlawed, but not necessarily allowed on the dirt paths. So make sure you keep your e-bike off the dirt path. I don't know if they will allow it if you're not using the e portion of it. I don't even know if that's possible because like I said, I didn't get an e-bike. Pets are allowed. They must be kept on a leash. They're not allowed in the welcome centers or any of the indoor, indoor buildings, unless of course they're service animals. Hunting, fishing, hiking, biking, camping, off-roading in an OHV, boating and swimming are just some of the activities that can be experienced at Land Between the Lakes. Now, when I say an OHV, Typically, that will mean like a mudding Jeep, a, a four-wheel drive pickup, four-wheelers, some kind of off-road vehicle. Looking at Land Between the Lakes websites, it seems most of these paths are geared towards four-wheelers, but they do have some areas open for Jeeps and, and larger vehicles as well. Uh, you must have a permit, and it's only allowed in areas, in certain areas. If you want to come in out of the woods for a little while, Nearby is Patty's 1880 settlement. It was established in 1977 in Grand Rivers, Kentucky, on the northwestern side of land between the lakes. To me, it seems like a much smaller version of Waldrug up in South Dakota. If you've ever been there, you'll probably be disappointed by Patty's. It just seems to be a similar concept. You can eat at the 1880s restaurant, stay at Patty, Patty's 1880s Lodge, Patty's Inn and Suites, Rose of the Lake, and Crockett Cap Campgrounds. There are several boutiques where you can go shopping, grab a little moonshine for those nights around the campfire. Side note, most state and national parks prohibit alcohol. Now, I've never heard of a ranger checking somebody's cup. So if you have alcohol in an unmarked cup, you're likely to get away as long as you're quiet, respectful, uh, and not causing a disturbance. However, do so at your own risk. You can be ejected from the park if they find you are breaking those rules. There are many other attractions over at Patty's Miniature Golf panning for gyms, there's gardens to visit, seasonal events, and they even host weddings. During one of our trips, we were curious about Patty's 1880s settlement, and we stopped by, but even from the parking lot, it just looked like it was too small to be overly interesting to me. However, as I mentioned, it gave off a smaller wall drug or even Gatlinburg vibe, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I personally have been to both, and I was afraid I'd be disappointed if I actually went in so I decided just to head back to the campground. It does seem like something very interesting, but I personally know I would be comparing it to other places where I've been in the past. So I just stayed out of there. Now, if I'm wrong about this and you've been there and you think it is way better than Waldrug, it is way better than Gatlinburg, you have to go see it. Please leave me a comment so that I know next time I'm in the area. I'm only about an hour, hour and a half from there. So I go quite often. If you aren't in the market for a destination, but you're just traveling from one place or another, land between the lakes, is convenient to I-24, so if you're passing through, it's worth the stop, even if it's just for a day. The area is beautiful. It's abundant with wildlife. The elk and uh, bison preserve are great and very inexpensive. And Patty even looks like it would be fun for those who haven't already been spoiled uh, by larger installations from that time period. 
In fact, if you have an RV, if you tent camp, if you car camp, it's worth the stop just to save the money you'd normally spend at much larger RV resorts and or hotels. Being so close to where we live, we've gone back many times at different times of the year, and there's always something going on. Whether you're looking for events at the visitor center, whether you want to see Laser Floyd at the planetarium, or you're just wanting to go look at some wildlife, Land Between the Lakes is a great place to relax, rejuvenate, and experience nature. If you like the original music I've used in this video, please be sure to check it out on your favorite streaming app or right here on YouTube. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave me any comments you have below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you down the road. Let's hit the road.